Hi, welcome back to Leads Code. So in this video, I'm going to discuss Leads Code problem 3629 minimum jumps to reach end via prime teleportation. So that means you are given an integer array nums of length n. Okay, you start at index zero, and your goal is to reach index n minus one. From any index i, you may perform one of the following operation. So what is the operation I can do? That actually first is adjacent step. That means jump to index i plus one or i minus one if the index is within bounds. That means if i plus one and i minus one within the range means zero to n minus one, then I can actually jump to this adjacent nodes. And another operation actually I can do that actually prime teleportation. That means if nums of i is a prime number p, you may instantly jump to any index j minus uh, j not equal to i. Such that uh, nums of j modulo of p is equal to zero. Okay, we have to return the minimum number of jumps required to reach index n minus one. So that means uh, first case is go to i plus one or i minus one. Case two is if the uh, current number nums of i is prime, then Go to actually uh, any other number that will divisible by current number. If the current number in the index i it is prime, then actually I can go to index j. If the nums of j, which number is present in index j, is divisible by nums of i. Correct. This is clear. So suppose for this example. One two four six. One two four six. So this is index zero. One two three. So our target is to reach from zero to three. I'll start from zero and I have to reach uh, three. But I have to calculate the minimum number of steps required to reach index three. So this is actually one. So from zero I can go to one. Index one. Because this is actually adjacent, is one is prime? No, one is not prime. So I can't go to any other elements. That is divisible by current number. So okay, this is actually one. One the value is two. So I can go to either zero, or I can either go to uh, index two. This is actually adjacent. So should I go to zero again? No, because I have already I am coming from zero to one. So again, if I go to zero, then it will loop. So it will actually increase actually the number of steps. So I don't need to go to zero. So if I go to actually index two, okay, I can actually go go to the index two, and this this number two is actually prime. Yes, this is prime. So which actually number I can go? I can go to this index also two because the current number actually four four modulo of two is equal to equal to zero. I can go, but I have already adjacent, so I have already visited here. Next, I can go to six. Check six modulo of two. Is it equal to zero? Yes. So I can go also index three also. So I have reached our destination, index three. So how many steps actually I have actually required? Here actually the steps actually are zero. Here actually I have done one step. So here actually uh, number of steps I have here actually I have reached by using one one step. For this index two, I can go to one more step. So it will be total two. Here actually I can go index three at one more, so it will actually step two. So you can see that how much minimum number of steps is required to reach this index three? It is required two number of steps. So here is the answer is output is two. This is clear. So first of all, I have to map one thing. Map that from any number which index indexes I can actually go. That means from this example one two four six. This is for case two. When actually the current number is prime, so which index I can go? So for this uh, suppose for one, which index actually I can go? This is not a prime, so I can only one to go. I can only can go to actually index zero. This is the only index I can go. Now for two number two, which index actually I can go? 
I can actually go. Uh, this is only prime number, so it it can only go to index itself. This will index one. No, but I can go to four also F from two. I can actually go to the number four, right? So that's why I have to identify that. I can actually go to index two, index three. You can just see that from this number two, I can go to index one, index two. This is index three. All are actually index. Here, right side actually index. Next from three. From num, if the current number is three, is it prime? Yes, it is prime. So, is any index is possible that is divisible by three? Yes, but which I can go? I can go to index three. Correct. Now four. Is it prime? No. So I can can go only to index four. Sorry, index two. Index of four is split to next five. So five can actually go to any other index that actually within this range zero to n minus one. No. So this is not this will empty. So in this will if I map this, if I map that for each number, which index actually I can go from zero to n minus one. If I map this, then actually I can uh, do check that. If I a current current number actually, I will check that this will be adjacent list. Adjacent list of current number. Got it. So how can I check that which index I can go? Suppose I want to know that current number is four. So what is the what is the factor of four? Factor of four actually is two, one, two, and four. Correct. But uh, what is the prime factors? Prime factors are two. Correct. It is two. So you can just see here that for this number two, I have stored index two. Clear. That means if a current number is two, then actually I can go to index number two, or actually it is four. Right. Similarly for factors of six, what are the prime factors? Two and three. Correct. Two and three. So or actually I can go from two also I can go to index number three. And from number three also, I can go to index number three. Any path clear? This may actually is clear. This is the number from which I can go to which index. Got it? So, if actually I have this map, I can easily know that from which uh, from this current number which index till I can go. I J K. Okay. In this till I can actually easily check that. Now I know that our starting index is zero. And number of steps is to start from here. Actually, I am start. I actually assume that this is the uh, zero number of steps I am used here. I am using here. So our target is to reach the destination n minus one. So I will take the mean heap. Just you just assume that this is actually the graph with respect to the graph. So for each node, for each node, or actually I can go. I can go to the adjacent. That means node plus one or node minus one. This is the case one. Actually, I can go another case. Actually, I can go the adjacent list of the divisible which number is divisible by current node. So adjacent node of node. These three options are possible. One is the node first two is the adjacent node minus one. Another node plus one and another actually uh, other nodes actually is possible to the divisible by current node. So I easily I will get from the map. Got it? This is clear. So now I know this. This is the current number of steps I have used here. Okay. So for this, if I want to go here, node plus one, how many steps I have to use? Steps plus one. Simply for to reach here, how many steps I have to use? Steps plus one. Simply for to all the to go to the any adjacent node. Again, I have to use the steps plus one. Only one steps. One more steps. Okay. Now our target is to minimize this minimum number of. So that's why I will take the minimum minimum mean heap. So ultimately, it is always store the mean minimum with respect to the minimum distance, minimum number of steps. Now I will check that what is the minimum distance. So I will store into the priority queue. This is something like uh, minimum distance from source to destination. The same problem, right? So. So just use this here. Actually, concept also same concept. So I'll take a ma map to store the adjacent list. So here's the key will be the number and the index. The value will be list of values will be 
the index which I can go. So that's why first of all iterate all the numbers. Okay, from zero to n minus one, and I will check that what are the factors of it. So I'll uh, factors mean I'll get the prime numbers. So for that each prime number I can come to this current index i. So that's why I'll iterate each the factors of the current number. And for this factor I can actually come to this I can actually come to this current index i. So that's why for this prime factor I am storing the current index i. Got it? So you can just see this from factor for this function I will pass any function any number x. So I'll check what is the factor. So factor can be from two to uh, x minus one. So I'll check. I'll go to the from two and d uh, to op to optimize this uh, number of factors. So it will be d into d less than equal to x. So I'll check that the current number d is it uh, is it a factor? That means this should be divisible by zero. Uh, divisible by current number d. So x modulo of d it should be zero. Then this is one factor. So I'll store this into our answer. So to store only the unique factor. So that's why I'll actually iterate again uh, till actually our current number is divisible by d. Okay, till it continue. So the, the, it will handle the duplicate uh, factors. Okay. So ultimately, after this for loop, I actually have some. Uh, I actually have all the till factor that is possible from two to n minus one. Now, if still actually our current number is greater than one, that means this is one more factor. So I'll store this into our answer. Okay. And return the result. So result actually in this result actually store all the factors, prime factors of the current number x. Okay. So Actually, I will get the factors, prime factors, and from this each factor, they mention that I can only come to this prime number from two to four, two to six. Two is the prime number, so I can go to this number four, number six. So I have to ultimately know the what is the index. So this is the j, this is the j. So that's I have to know that for this number two, which actually I, index I can go from j one, I can go to j two. Okay. So that's why I'm mapping. I will map this. So things. So just iterate the all the factors, and from each factor, I'll store the current index i, because I can come to this current number. Okay. Now, similar way, I have to use the min if, so that's why I need a distance vector. So it actually initializes with int max, because initially all the from source to destination, all the distance is actually infinite, right? And minimum priority queue, min if. So what is the key? Key will be the steps, because I have our target is to sort the in the with respect to the minimum number of steps. So and the next will be the the index currently I am present, and this is to generate the mean heap. And initially, for actual study, I am starting from index zero, and how many steps I have used till now zero. So that's why number of steps I have is zero, current index is zero, and the distance of zero it will be zero because I am starting from here. So zero to zero, the distance will be zero. So till actually our queue is not empty, so I have to explore all the possibility because it we may actually get better answer. So that's why. Just check what is the distance and the node. So just pop from the queue and what is the uh, three options actually I can go? I can go to the right side, left side, and I can actually visit the all the adjacent node actually I can go if the current number is prime. So that's why I will check that if the node plus one is within this range, then I'll check that if the current distance, current distance with the number of steps it's required, it is already better. Then if I will go, I will go, but If it is already, I have a, suppose I have already explored that I have one path that actually take two steps, but the, in the current path it will actually actually five steps. Should I actually go to this current path? Not should not because it will actually give us it will not give us a better result. So that's why I will skip that time. So I'll check that it will get getting any better answer. So if the distance of the current uh, the node plus one the adjacent node if it is greater than the current distance distance plus one then actually I will explore this path. So I'll store the distance of the It is a node. It will be one plus dis, uh, distance of the current node, and insert this current node into the queue. Queue means in the priority queue. Similarly, for the left side, this is for to right side. And this is for left side node minus one. I'll check that if it is greater than zero, greater than equal to zero, and I'll check the distance, the current distance it will take if it is better. The order path actually I have actually till now for the node node minus one. So that time I will actually store the uh, distance of one plus one plus this and store this into the parity queue. The current node current node will be the node minus one. Okay. And next I have to do the third operation third type operation that actually the 
uh, I can go to the adjacent list if the current number is prime. So prime number if the current number is prime. So I have to know that what actually which number I can go, which index I can go from the current number. So current number is nums of node. If uh, I'll check all how, which index I can go, so I'll check that for this similar way, I should check that it, if it is get, getting a better result or not. So I'll check that for this adjacent index it. So this is suppose u to v. So index v, I'll check that if the distance of v is greater than the dis, this plus one, current distance plus one step more. So then actually I will export this path. So I'll store this uh, the distance better the current distance and store this the current node into the priority queue. Got it? So in this for loop, I explore all the adjacent nodes I can go. That means this is this case. So prime teleportation. If the current uh, number is prime number p, then you may instantly jump to any index j. So that's why I'll go to all the j that actually distance plus one because it needs to one more steps. So and store this into the queue means the priority queue and uh, ultimately clear the adjacent list of the current node because again i will not try to uh, i do not want to explore the current um, node again because otherwise it will duplicate right so i'll clear those uh, all the data for the current node and ultimately this after this while loop i actually have the uh, num minimum number of steps required to for each 0 to 1 0 to 2 single source and destination can be anything but out here it's a destination is n minus one so what about the number of stores record in store in the distance vector so i have to return that clear so just map that from this array how you are actually if you actually able to map this is a graph then actually it will be easy to understand that um, from each node current node or the current index i if you assume that this is actually a node graph node then actually which node other nodes i can go Correct. So it can be node plus one, it can be node minus one, and it can be other uh, index j that actually divisible by current number. So that actually I can easily find out from the factor method. So from each number, I will check the what is the factors of the current number. So for each factor, I can come to this current index. Okay. So I'll store this in the map. Got it. So I hope this is clear. And if you found this useful, please like the video. And if you not yet subscribe, please subscribe channel. And you have any suggestion, you can comment on that also. Thank you.